G'day and welcome back to my channel. The war spite has moved ahead quite a lot. I mean, everything's kind of grey now, which looks rather good. But I have completely refurbished the forward superstructure. It now has a whole lot more detail. You can see I've drilled out all the holes. There's a proper join here for that front piece, which is woeful in the original kit. It's just looking a whole lot better and it's a whole lot smoother. So that, I think, is a big improvement. This little piece has had those horrible holes filled in. Ginormous things. All this detail put into it. You can see there, and I've put my own, these beams of scratch, much thinner than the ones in the kit. So that has improved that part immeasurably. So would you like to see the things that I did to improve the forward superstructure and the rear superstructure and get this thing all painted up and ready to go? You would? Great! Roll the music! <laughs> On with the build. Continuing off where we left last time, I'd finished making these things with the um, scratch little casement guns, right? Now the thing is, that's in this silly little piece that still has to be attached to the hull and the deck. And it's a bit sort of bloody fiddly, but I worked out a way that sort of works because it's going to fit in here, right? But it also has to click into the deck above it. So you've got to know exactly where it's got to go. So I figured the best way was look at the deck above first and we'll click it into these holes. Okay, so we'll take that piece and we'll click her in. It goes in with a nice resounding little click. There we go. In she goes, nice and firm. Now it'll friction hold into there, so then I can just gently drop that onto there, right? Deck onto the hole. Then I know the whole thing lines up. So with that in place now, we need to rubber band it so it doesn't move. Be very careful not to bump it or the bloody thing falls inside, which happened to me a number of times. Very annoying. All right, so the rubber band's on. Hold that in place. And this is the bit that you'd probably be horrified by, but honestly, it works. We glue from the outside. Yeah, not even with Tamiya Thin. Don't worry, because we're only at the priming stage here at the moment, and a lot of this is going to just going to sand it off. So it will all clean up in the end. You don't have to worry about that. As you saw at the beginning of the video, it looks rather nice once it's primed. Bit in there, and we are all done. Now, in my last video, I'd made these little scratch additions, which removed some problems in the kit. So I'm just tidying those up a little bit. They um, they turned out rather nice. But one issue we have here is these big holes. See, FX has these huge holes for a great big part that's way over scale. So I'm going to fill those, and I'm going to fill those from the inside. Yeah. It sort of actually works a lot better. You'll see my method to my madness here, or my madness to my method. But the perfect plastic putty is a nice little water-based uh, paint. I think it's sort of made out of marble dust or, or no pixie farts or something. I don't know. Anyhow, uh, you squeeze that through with the toothpick. Push it through. Right? This a trick only works if you've got access to the inside. And then it pops through the other end. You end up with these little, um, these little warts, right? And they're fairly easy just to trim off with the blade once they are set. So it's as easy as that. And then a light sanding with those and they're going to look just perfect. Yep. That makes that uh, that problem go away fairly quickly. All right. Now for the next trick, we want to add some details. There's no little, well, I call them portholes, but I got picked up on that last time. There's no little windows. <laughs> There's no windows back here, right? Nobody can see out. Poor little sailors. They're all locked in, right? They're jailed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work out the height, and I've measured this up from some drawings that I've got. I showed you that last time that I purchased a whole lot of plans for Warspite. So I know roughly where they should be, and all I've got to do is make sure I put a level piece of tape across there. Why am I doing this? This is because, well, if you're doing it just sort of by hand or trying to sort of do it by eye, things don't end up level. If you've got the tape there, then things are going to be perfectly level. Now, I decided works out about every two millimeters put one of these little um windows yeah i don't know i still think they're portholes i really do they're on the side of the ship you know when it's in port you look out of them yeah, anyhow okay so i've got those marked there 
Now I could use the scriber and um, pre sort of, you know, make a pilot hole, but honestly, because you've got the tape there, you've got something to lean against and you don't move. So working on each of those lines that I've drawn, I've only got to lean the uh, drill bit up and using the pin vise, through she goes. Easy as that. All right. And they should all be consistent. They'll be just a little higher than that line. In fact, that line ends up being like the center line of the hole. Because as you push against it, you, um, you go a little bit higher. But this is a great little trick. And you work your way along. If everything is consistent and everything is constant, then you should end up with a perfectly level line of little holes, which is what you're looking for. You want them to line up. Nothing worse than having your holes up, down and all over the place, is there? No. No, girls. You like your holes nice and straight. Exactly. <coughs> you know, we get banned for that one, Harry. <laughs> okay, so riveting stuff here. Drilling holes. It's just fascinating, isn't it? Uh, okay, one to go. One to go. Oh, thank goodness for that. Were you getting bored? I was getting bored. And I did this thing. All right, so last one goes in, and then the proof is in the pudding. Did they all line up? Let's have a look. Rip the tape off, and yep, that's pretty good. I think we've got one. Yep, they're about as level as you can get. I mean, they may not be 100% perfect. Now, these ones are different. Here, Airfix put little bumps for those um, non-porthole windows. So if I get my scriber out, which in my case is a cord on the cob holder that's missing one of its prongs, but if you use a proper scribe tool or punching tool or whatever, you can then scribe in the middle of that, use your pin vise, and drill through and you'll be able to convert one of Airfix's blobs into a nice hole. Now before I moved on any further the kit I need to secure those nuts in the hull as I've had this stand on there while I've sort of been working on things. So the nuts go on and are cemented in with white wood glue. This is like PVA you know white wood glue. That then when it's set allows me to unscrew the stands and I know my nuts are going to be in place and won't disappear. Now I have great joy in doing this bit. A lot of people might find this boring but actually I really enjoy scraping and sanding and shaping. It probably goes back to my days of woodworking. You know when I woodwork kits that's what you did. You started with a block of wood and you had to shape everything. So scraping here to get the hole together is what you do. I'm just about any ship kit you've got it'll never line up perfectly. There's always going to be a little bit of sanding and scraping. That's just part of the course. It's not a bad kit. It's just how they are. There we go. That's sanding up sort of nicely. There was just a little bit of a ledge there but um, it doesn't take long and I have sanded all that off and I thoroughly enjoy sort of doing that sort of stuff. There you go. Nice and smooth. Yep. Just like I bought one Harry. Now it's time to start adding some of the pieces to the hull here. So first there's the Admiralty Walk at the back here. That required quite a bit of cleanup, but that part does come up reasonably nicely. And now all these prop shafts and um, I don't put the, um, the screws on, right? prop screws, leave them to absolute later. But what I do here is I'll fit all these. Now they take a bit of finagling because the arms on everything is far too long. And also the recess in there just isn't the right depth. But it doesn't take long and you can sort of fiddle and faff with them and eventually get them all level. Then it's just a matter of filling the holes. Now a lot of that is because I previously made this kit and so there's a bit of damage. So that's my fault. But you'll still probably need to fill a few little things anyway because the recesses that Airfix gives you are far bigger than you need. And as I say, you've got to cut a little bit off those triangles. Okay, one of the other parts that um, I'd worked on was the front bridge. Now I'd actually added even more sort of scratch to it. I'd completely replace that entire front, the whole triangle area. Now to make it more interesting and to replace the detail which is lost, I need to put in again those non-porthole windows. God, we'll just call them portholes and be damned with it. You can complain. So lining that up with the bumps, which are the windows which are already present and molded, again I use my little tape method and that will allow me to get the drill bit out. Okay, so first we compare to the drawings that I've got. Yep. And I work out and just sort of do this ballpark line of sight. You could measure it, do an exact job, but I'm just sort of winging it here. You know, it's um, for a start, this whole front area is so inaccurate by Airfix. The actual armoured bridge area is wrong. And I thought of completely rebuilding it, but honestly, 
I don't think I'd live long enough to get everything done. Now, once I've got those sort of marked, it's just a matter of resting up my rule in here and we can get a nice straight line. Why are we doing that? Because there's three different runs of these. So we want everything to line up. So the bottom run is going to go across on the um, tape and the rest of them, I'll mark those up and I'll do those with pilot holes. But at least I'll get that bottom one level and I can measure everything off that. So it's just a matter here of making sure you're nice and square and penciling in that guiding line. Okay, so we've got that. We'll be able to mark all the window holes. Again, pin vise, drilling, pushing against the tape. This method is so easy and it always gives a very good result. Easy enough now to clean that up with the eraser and that will simply remove all of those pencil marks so we don't get any sort of pre-shading effect when we go to um, basically paint it. Get into the crowd corners there, I actually use the sanding sponge. That works really well to actually remove any sort of pencil marks. So with that all sanded up and corrected, you'll also notice one of the little holes there I had to actually fix. Yeah, that one was slightly out. It's easy enough to fill it again with the putty and re-drill it if you get one wrong. Okay, let's get on with the painting. Okay, the parts have been left to dry overnight, so that primer has set, and it's now time to do a dry fit, assemble this all together. So let's see how that looks. I start by adding the brass pedestals. Now, I won't be adding the wooden part for now. I just want some weight on this, which makes it easier to work with. This is a trick that I often do, is I'll add these pedestals. See, there you go. That's where we glued them in. So my nuts don't come loose, and you don't want loose nuts, do you, honey? No, you don't. Okay, so 
pedestals in and as I said this just adds a bit of weight and gives me something to hold on to sometimes while I'm sort of handling the, the boat especially as I start doing some painting. And of course I've forgotten there's a few little parts that I put safely in here that need to be added. So there we have it, as you can see, it's all starting to come together rather nicely. Still needs rubber bands for now, because this is of course a dry fit. But I think you can see the improvements that I've made here on the forward superstructure and this little stern section here as well. And they've come up a treat, very happy with them. My cranes still need shortening, yes I know, if you'd watched the previous one you know I made them slightly too long, I'll, I'll get around to that, that's going to happen. I've got a few little touch ups here and there with the um, primer, that's not a problem, because all of this is going to get covered with the camo pattern. Yes, I'm going to save that for next time. We're going to do a war spike camo, and it's not one that's done very often, but I think it's going to be a rather nice one. If you've watched up to this point, then thank you very much. And uh, I know there's a lot of music in this video because I was unable to drop in a lot of the voice bits that I normally do because my neighbours started to have a great big loud party at the point I needed to do that editing. So, um, yeah, thanks, neighbours. Yeah.
<laughs> Anyhow, if you like this video, please hit that like button. It really helps the algorithm and it helps to keep my channel here. By all means, comment. Just be respectful about it. And you can join my channel by subscribing. That would be really good. Then you'll get to see the videos. You'll get notified, all that sort of stuff. You know, algorithm, algorithm, algorithm. And look, if you um, really want to help me out, hit super thanks. Or go to Patreon or YouTube members and join. It really helps me keep putting out these videos. Okay, that's the end of the video. So it's goodbye from Australia. And it's Huru from Harry Houdini.